It was the first time that the country was being represented in rugby, lawn bowls, and female basketball. The 2018 Games also represented Jamaica's most successful performance with 27 medals. Seven gold medals, nine silver medals, and 11 bronze medals. Special mention must be given to the performances of Daniel Thomas Dodd, Frederick Dakers, Janeve Russell, Aisha Pratt Lear, Chris Binney, our Sunshine Girls, and, and last but surely not least, our Paralympian, Tevon Thomas, in earning a bronze medal in the 100 meter. I'm really appreciative of my directorship, and they have grasped the vision that we have articulated before, and that is to say, Jamaica must at all times exercise its right to athletic progress. I'd also like to thank the captains of the team, Janelle Fowler, Reed and uh, Frederick Dakers. Both captains played their part admirably. They led by example. Dakers got his goal, and Fowler Reed led by example on the court in us getting the bronze medal. And I really want to thank them for their leadership and also the tone of their leadership. Very measured, very affable, very disciplined. I'd also like to thank the para athletes who went, Tevon and Jason who did us proud. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for donning the colors of the national, uh, national colors and making us very proud. <laughs> May I also thank Greg Ray Hamilton, who was our logistics manager, who commanded the transportation system with admirable efficiency and competency to the extent, Minister, that he became a friend of those who were in charge of the transportation system. These are the competencies that we bring to bear on the success of the game, and I thank Gregory Hamilton for his contribution. Juliette Campbell, who organized for us the gears, and who ensured that all athletes were well suited, and who were very pleased with how she handled the business. And of course, Juliette is a household name in the Olympic movement and in the Commonwealth Games movement as well. I'd like to thank Robert Scott in particular, my director, who organized Minister, the Commonwealth House Manor which was a hub for camaraderie, friendship, international comedy, amidst the cuisine and the music, which was so infectious and which accentuated the Jamaican brand and also dealt very humanely with how sport should be delivered on an international stage. People came and enjoyed the music, enjoyed the festivity, but at the same time, Minister, we also had a sport forum which indicated the thought leadership of Jamaica we had a forum which dealt with a lot of um, um, topics. And what we are trying to do at the JOE is to ensure that the Olympic movement, the Commonwealth Games Federation movement, and those allied movements understand that behind the success of any athlete must be the thought of organization, of psychology. And that is what we brought to bear, Minister, on the forum. And I'd like to thank Robert Scott again, who worked tirelessly, as well as John Welch, a Jamaican who lives in Australia, who also, from a logistic point of view, ensured that it came off seamlessly. And Minister, I must thank Dejo Russell. He embodies the aspirations of an emerging generation of sprinters who wish to take their rightful place on the international stage. He came and he went to the final, and he was congratulated by all experts at his willingness and his tenacity. And I want to say that the Joey is very insistent that there must be generational success. 
And this is why we encourage our youth to take their rightful place on the international stage and to do the country proud. And I have no doubt that his example will be emulated by those who also have excelled. One of the focuses was really on how it is that a brand Jamaica can benefit from our prowess in sports. How is it that separate and apart from the accolades for the athletes, how do we generate income for our country from the brand of sport? The athletes would have gone out there and we saw it before and we saw it again at the Commonwealth Games where Jamaica brought home 27 medals, the most medals at a Commonwealth Games ever. How do we move now, transition from this into an industry of sport in Jamaica? Because at the end of the day, who benefits? Separate and apart from the accolades, how does the country benefit? How does the GDP grow because of the contribution of sports? So I was very happy about being there. I must tell you also that after the presentations, we were flocked by countries who also participated, a lot of them, separate and apart from wanting to come to meet Minister Grange, they also wanted to come to find out what it is that we are doing so well and how it is that they can emulate us. So therefore it is important then as a member of staff at the Ministry with Responsibility for Sport to congratulate the Jamaica Olympic Association, the athletes, the administrators for a job well done. Because had it not been for what you have always been doing, our participation in the sports, Commonwealth Sports Minister's meeting would not have been the success that I think it was. I have nothing but praise for the Jamaica team. In fact, I'm a very proud minister. I'm really in the right place at the right time. And to see that we came home with 27 medals. And certainly the diversity in the sports discipline or participation speaks volume to what we can achieve. <laughs> As Jamaicans, we can achieve anything we set our minds to. In fact, I, I see where for the first time, our female basketball team, we had a female basketball team. For the first time, lawn bowl sport. Can you imagine? Rugby. And I see here Chris Binney, squash player. I don't know if it is it the first time, but it's the first time that we reach the quarterfinals. I, we must take notice of how well Jamaica did in the field events as well which is a mark of the overall progress that we have been making in track and field. There were some great striking moments, some striking first. Aisha Prout Lear's history making a gold medal run in the steeplechase. <laughs> and then followed by Natoya Gould getting Jamaica's first medal ever in the women's 800 meters. And you know, the thing about Natasha, she's so, so petite. <laughs> Such a little bundle of energy. I mean, I'm really so happy for her. And another first, of course, was the Sunshine Girls beating New Zealand in an international <laughs> tournament to win the netball bronze. For me, it was agonizing when they were beaten by one, by England. So you can imagine the, the, the feeling when they bounce back, we say in Jamaica, we'll and come again, <laughs> and beat the New Zealands by five. I mean, it's, it's just, I really think they deserve great commendation. We will be bidding to stage major international sport and cultural events right here in Jamaica. And who knows? Perhaps the Commonwealth Games will be one of those major events that our International Bidding Committee will add to their shortlist. And so I hope that in 2020, I'll be in Tokyo with you, right? 
that's the, that hopefully everything will be okay with everybody and we'll all be there together. Yes. And then we'll make Jamaica even that much more proud. Because when I look at the Karifta Games, the tra transition is working. We are moving into a new era and our young athletes are moving in the right direction. And when we look at our success at the Commonwealth Games, I know that we have had a glorious past. We are basking in a wonderful present and our future will be great. Thank you.